Well, hey there, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is a very special video because it is the 20th year anniversary of the iPod Classic first generation, the iPod 1G, the first ever iPod, the OG iPod, or whatever you want to call it. It is the first of all iPods, and it's hard to imagine. It has been exactly 20 years to this date on October 23rd, 2001, when this thing was announced by Steve Jobs. And um, in this video, we'll be going over everything related to this iPod, its history, its specs, and its successors, and um, basically how this thing played out uh, for the last 20 years. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you owned one of these things, or you still own it, or you want to get your hands on one of these things. And I know these things are very expensive because of their collector's item status. And um, if you have any other comments as well, uh, let me know down in the comment section by leaving a comment, uh, whether you want to get your hands on one of these things or what you think about this thing. And basically, and whether you owned any iPod model, uh, for that matter, if you're an iPod collector or whatever. Um, so there's a lot to cover in this video on the 20th anniversary. It's just really hard to uh, grasp. It's been 20 years and my one still works perfectly here as you can see here. Um, they're really hard to find. They're really expensive, especially when they work. And uh, it is one of the, uh, it is basically the gold standard of uh, a iPod collector's collection. This and the iPod Shuffle third generation stainless steel, obviously, that's also really rare. Before we jump right in, uh, like I said, don't forget to leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Thumbs up and let's jump into this video starting off with history. So firstly, for a bit of background on how the iPod came to be, the design aesthetics behind it, and everything that went into designing the original iPod. Now, firstly, Steve Jobs contacted the uh, chief engineer at the time, a guy called John Rubenstein, who in turn hired a guy called Tony Fidel. Now, this is Tony Fidel, and he was an ex-Philips and General Magic engineer. Now, uh, I don't know much about General Magic as a company, but Philips was known for designing a lot of the the earlier mp3 players so this guy easily had a lot of experience this tony fadell guy and um, a lot of components for the original ipod were designed out of house uh, so not in apple now, a lot of parts were designed by apple but some parts were also designed out of house because apple's engineers were already really stressed uh, with the Mac designs and stuff at the time they were designing new Macs and stuff So they didn't really have time so a lot of companies from out of house were hired to design a lot of the components For starters the uh, hard drive Rubenstein decided to use the Toshiba 1.8 inch hard drive Which he purchased the rights to at the time from Toshiba so Toshiba 1.8 inch hard drive that brand manufacturer was Toshiba he purchased the rights back in the day and the project was initially called project p68 so that was what the original ipod was called project p68 um, a company called Poda player designed the os as you can see here and the uh the interface the user interface on top of that was designed by a company called pixo so quite interesting to see a lot of companies played a major role in designing the original ipod Sir Johnny Ive in himself, the uh, legendary Sir Johnny Ive, the design god from Apple, uh, he designed the display on the original iPod and a guy called Michael Dewey designed the power supply, the battery and everything else, also an ex-Apple employee. Um, now for a background on what the word iPod means and where they got it from and the design aesthetic. So the word iPod actually comes from a 1968 movie and everyone's probably heard of this movie and watched this movie. I'm pretty sure everyone on earth has uh, the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey uh, by Arthur C. Clarke. The movie was released in 1968 as the 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. And in the movie, a character says, open the pod bay doors. Uh, I'll try and put a clip from the movie here. So here we go. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. And I'd like you to go ahead and ask your Siri on whatever device you have, your iPad, your home pod, your phone, whatever. Ask Siri to open the pod bay doors and see what it says. It's quite interesting. 
So as you saw there, it says open the pot bay doors. Uh, and um, I'm sorry if I couldn't find that, uh, that part would have just been blank because uh, there's usage rights as well for the movie. But a short, uh, a short clip, I'm pretty sure that doesn't hurt. But as you saw in the movie, it says open the pot bay doors. And they got the idea for pod from there. And they, had, they added the I in from somewhere. So that's where the name iPod comes from. It's from the 1968 movie, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. The design aesthetic for this thing, the main overall design comes from a 1958 uh, Braun T3 transistor radio. So here's a picture of it next to the iPod. The 1958 Braun T3 transistor radio, they look really identical, which was designed by a guy called Data Rams. Uh, and the click wheel comes from a telephone, a cordless telephone called the Bang & Olufsen uh, Biocom 6000. So the Bang & Olufsen Bio Biocom 6000, as you can see here, that's where they got the idea for for the click wheel from. So pretty interesting to see how this thing was designed. That was just a quick overview of the history of design and how this thing came to be. So as the date says so, it was announced on October 23rd, 2001, and it was initially launched with only a five gig model. And there were two models of the five gig version. The first one, which is uh, this one that I have here is M8541. And also it came in a model called M8513. Now this is M8541, as you can see there on the, uh, the model number there. And uh, this thing initially came with a five gig model only. So a five gig micro drive built in and uh, it was only supported on Mac. So you could only plug this thing on Mac. But eventually they did release a PC version as well with a 10 gigabyte option later on, which was known as the M8709, uh, which was uh, compatible with PC. Uh, there was also a five gig version later on, which was compatible with PC as well. But this is the launch edition uh, the version that was supported uh, for the uh, Mac only. So here's a video of Steve Jobs announcing it. Uh, this video is really iconic, but uh, this video would not be, uh, my, uh, my review would not be complete without me playing this video. So let's watch it first and then continue with the video. That is where we want to be. And we are introducing a product today that takes us exactly there. And that product is called iPod iMac, iBook, iPod. What is iPod? iPod is an MP3 music player, has CD quality music, and it plays all of the popular open formats of digital music, MP3, MP3 variable bitrate, uh, WAV, and AIFF. But the biggest thing about iPod is it holds a thousand songs. Uh, and let me show you. This is what iPod looks from the side. Again, about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to show you the back first because I'm in love with it. It's stainless steel. It's really, really durable. It's beautiful. And this is what the front of it looks like. Boom. That's iPod. I happen to have one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. <laughs> there it is, right there. So, this amazing little device holds a thousand songs and it goes right in my pocket. A very iconic video and if you're already an iPod uh, enthusiast, fan, whatever, uh, you probably already seen that but that's just for those who have not seen it. Um, it's really blurry and it, it's from 2001 but um, still for, it is for what it is, it's uh, a part of history and we saw Steve Jobs announcing it there, taking it out of his pocket and um, it's just it's just amazing to think that that was 20 years ago. Now I'm 25 years old and uh, I was really small back then. Um, I don't really remember much of it. Uh, I saw some of the stuff on TV uh, that was it was going on in the news. It was it was a big deal at the time. Uh, but my memory is very vague. I was about five or six at the time. So um, not uh, something that I remember properly. Anyway, uh, carrying on with the history of this thing, this thing initially shipped 
uh, at a cost of $399. So the five gig model was $399 and then the 10 gig model and stuff uh, they ship later were also at the same price. Um, it had multiple supported software versions. So it initially shipped with iPod software 1.0. Now they just called it iPod software 1.0. Let me go into extras here and show you the, uh, well not extras, go into settings and show you the about section. So uh, this one is running the final version. So which is iPod software 1.5. So the previous owner has updated this thing uh, and the hard drive on this thing is empty as you can see here. So it shipped with iPod software 1.0 and was finally supported to iPod software 1.5. And it finally shipped on November 10th of 2001 with the slogan, a thousand songs in your pocket. So that was actually true at the time, depending on the bitrate and the length of the song, but it was roughly a thousand songs in your pocket with the five gigabyte hard drive. And again, it varied obviously depending on the length and stuff, but on average, that was true. Um, and it was an instant hit. It sold uh, really well, especially in the United States uh, at its 399 price tag. It was the most priciest obviously at the time uh, but it could also hold the most songs and it was considered small uh, and that's kind of hard to imagine because there were a lot of mp3 players that could stow as many songs as this thing uh, but they were huge they were massive this thing was comparatively small uh, with the amount of stuff that it could hold. There were smaller mp3 players, but they could they could hold about uh, 80 to 100 songs. This thing could hold a thousand songs. So that was its size and it was comparatively really small. But eventually here's the uh, iPod Shuffle 4 generation. As you can see there, it is uh, minuscule. The iPod Shuffle 4 generation uh, by volume, I think, is the smallest iPod ever made. Um, it could be the third generation, but the third generation is really tall. So I think think by volume, the fourth generation is the smallest. Uh, so that was how it was launched. And uh, over the years, uh, this thing became more pricier and pricier as it uh, obviously collect, uh, collected a uh, uh, collector status over time. Uh, people wanted this for their collection. It was the iconic iPod first generation, the iPod of all iPods. And um, eventually this thing reached prices on eBay of around 500, 600. There is one that's still sealed on eBay. It goes to like $26,000. And um, yeah, th this thing is really, really valuable. So if you have one, like I said, leave a like on this video and comment down below if it was your original iPod iPod, like whether you owned it from day one or you bought it later on. Now let's go into some of the technical specifications of the iPod Classic first generation. And here's a big fun fact that a lot of people actually don't know about this thing. The original Lord of the Rings movie, and thumbs up if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, um, the, on the movie set of the original movie, this thing was used by the production crew to store digital video over Firewire because it could store five gigs of video and uh, it could use Firewire, which was one of the fastest mediums at the time. Uh, so the film crew of The Lord of the Rings actually used this thing, a couple of these actually on the film set. And there was this story, I don't know how tr far true it is. There was a production crew member who had to escape a bunch of uh, pickpockets or thieves, well thieves, uh, by outrunning them while he was delivering one of these from the Apple store to the film set uh, while walking on the streets of London. I don't know how far true that is, but uh, it says so on the wiki page that um, a, a, a set member a uh, member on the production set had to run from thieves while they were trying to rob him of the iPod when he was going from the Apple store to the film set. I'm not, I cannot confirm that, but it's something that I found online. Um, it's kind of interesting though. I, I read about this a couple of years ago and I just remembered it while I was making this video and I added this portion in. So just a fun fact. So first let's have a quick go around of the device and then jump into all the uh, minor technical specs a bit later. Now first up front here we have the display which we'll talk about in a bit. We have the menu button, fast forward, fast backwards, play pause and the select button down here. And this is the only iPod to ever have a physical scroll wheel uh, as you can see here. Uh, it actually moves when I put an object on the uh, wheel and you move it around. The second generation onwards had a uh, touch scroll wheel and this is the only uh, iPod to ever have a physical scroll wheel. Uh, let's move on to the side here. So the side, there's nothing uh, much on the side. It's just a stainless steel body. Um, at the bottom here, nothing either. 
On this side, we have nothing either. Up top, we have the Firewire connector, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the hold, uh, um, basically the lock switch hold and unlock switch. And moving on to the back, we have the iPod branding with the Apple logo, the model number, serial number, and all the other stuff. This is stainless steel. This can be polished to made, make it look better at this age, but I haven't polished mine yet. And that's just a quick go around of the device. A overall very solidly built device, easily the best built music player of its time. The plastic up front is also really solid. You get a few cracks here and there, but hey, what, what do you expect? This thing is 20 years old. Uh, the stainless steel at the back still looks amazing. After a few, uh, after a bit of polishing, uh, it'll look even better. But that's just a quick go around of the iPod itself. So the display on this thing is a two inch display diagonally like that or like that. It has a resolution of 160 by 128. So 160 by 128. Uh, like I said, it's a two inch display. It is a monochrome LCD with uh, backlighting. As you can see here, you can turn it on or turn it off uh, with this button or you can have it constantly on, but it obviously does drain a lot of battery. Uh, it obviously, like I said, it's monochrome, so no colors or whatever. You can just see the basic stuff in black and white. Uh, outdoor performance of this thing is actually quite nice when you turn turn off the backlight. You can see this really well uh, with the outdoor lighting, kind of like those older Game Boys. You, uh, you can just use it outdoor uh, without a lot of reflection on the screen. And when you're indoor, you can turn on the backlight as well. And as for internal specs, uh, like I said earlier, this thing shipped with uh, iPod firmware 1.0 and was finally upgradable to uh, iPod firmware uh, 1.5. Well, that's not technically a spec, but it's the software. And moving on to specs, actually the hard drive on this thing is a 1.8 inch hard drive. So 1.8 inches about that much, uh, roughly the size of the scroll wheel there. It's quite a large hard drive. Uh, so 1.8 inches and the competition that used hard drives actually used a 2.5 inch hard drive. So considerably larger. And that's what you had to pay to uh, get more storage because uh, solid state storage was in its infancy at the time uh, when it came to music players and the ones that did have solid state storage had like 64 megs to 100 and 128 megs and they were really tiny they couldn't really store much uh, many songs about 80 to 100 songs this thing could hold a thousand songs with its five gigabyte hard drive and these hard drives somewhat give out after some time but my one is still running very smoothly i, I was really surprised uh, with how well my one still runs it charges up really well the hard drive isn't rough when i hold my ear to it it runs really well i guess the previous owner really took care of this ipod and i got this thing for a really cheap price as well just a mere 46 dollars i've done a video on it you can find it on my channel um I said earlier, these things go for an excess of $500, but I got this for just a mere 46, so I kind of got lucky there. Either way, 1.8 inch hard drive versus the 2.5 inches with the competitors. Um, and uh, that was basically how media was stored on this thing uh, back in the day. In terms of ports, again, I mentioned earlier, we have Firewire, we have uh, the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack over there as well, and that's all you have for ports. It charges and syncs through Firewire. It was one of the fastest at the time, so that's why Apple chose to use it, and um, it did its job perfectly. It's the issue is I cannot connect this to uh, any of my PCs or Macs that I, well, I'll have to connect it to Mac, uh, that I have today because I don't have uh, a older one with a Firewire port. However, there's a bunch of cables that you can mix and match and do it. I believe some YouTuber did it, um, but that's just uh, excess work. And I might as well get an older Mac later on and connect to it in a different video. So stay tuned for that. But as of now, this thing is currently empty. Um, in terms of other specs, there's basically nothing much. I guess it was pretty basic. It's just an MP3 player at the end of it. It's just a uh, basic MP3 player. It's just Apple's take on an MP3 player. And it was the MP3 player that brought about change in the mp3 market the one that started it all the ipod of all ipods and uh, it's just interesting to see that uh, it's been 20 years since this thing was released it's it's really hard to uh, imagine now let's go into the firmware here and uh, talk about uh, what we have in terms of firmware so first we have music up here your playlists artists albums songs genres composers audiobooks uh, when i click these it's empty obviously like i said this thing is empty empty next we have extras over here let's go down we have clock over there then we have uh, contacts over there calendar and there's a single game which is that uh, 
space shooter bouncy thingamajig game uh, i'm pretty decent at this game uh, but i'm doing this through the viewfinder so i'm probably not going to be as good but as you can see uh, you can move this around and uh, this scroll wheel actually is a bit too sensitive for this but uh, it's easier on the second generation's touch wheel but this also just does the trick as you can see there that is the game i've got a really high score on this game uh, on a different ipod as well settings we have about i showed you earlier main menu you can turn off and on whatever you like uh, backlit timer sleep etc etc you have that setting on other ipods as well shuffle repeat sound check backlight timer eq contrast alarm sleep timer date and time the clicker you can turn it on and off the the clicking sound legal and language as well <clears throat> here we have shuffle songs and the backlight as well so very basic interface uh for what it is this is updated to the final firmware ipod uh, firmware 1.5 we have uh ipod up here and then we have the battery status over there as you can see there this thing holds battery really well as well and the battery has not been replaced i cannot find anywhere that someone has opened this thing on the body because it'll leave a mark if you try to open this thing but no one has tried to open this so it's really strange that the battery still holds a charge like i said the previous owner really took care of this thing and i am too because this is my only first generation these two are second generations like i said and i will be getting my hands on a first generation another one in time to come because i want another one so before we go, I'm going to do a quick segment here on how to recognize a first generation from a second generation, because if you look at them right out of the bat, they look really identical. But there are a few differences uh, that you can use to uh, identify them if you're buying them online. And the first generation is up top. As you see on the second generation, the stainless steel overlaps the top and overlaps the ports, as you can see there. This is the second gen. This is the first gen, as you see there. The first gen, the plastic is over here. Second gen, the stainless steel is over here. Also on the first gen, there is no flap covering the Firewire port and the second generation has the flap. But then again, that could actually fall off after so many years. But if there's a flap on there, it's definitely a second generation. Moving on to the back. The iPod branding is a dead giveaway on the second generation. As you can see, it is bold writing. And on the first generation, it is not bold. It's just sort of an aerial-ish. I don't know what that is, but that's a clear difference. This is the only iPod to ever use that kind of writing. So that is also a dead, dead giveaway. The first generation 5 gig does not have a marking over here, as you can see. So it doesn't say 5 gig or anything. But the first generation second, the, the first generation 10 gig has a 10 gig marking over here. The second generation all have the uh, markings over here so that is also a difference so if you want a first generation launch edition 5 gig you're not going to see the 5 gig marking over there so that was just a quick difference at the back and at the front there is also a difference but you should have a really good eye to notice it and the photo has to be clear the first generation since it has a moving click wheel there's going to be a lot of gaps between as you can see there the second generation is more recessed into the body and does not have many gaps because this is a uh, as you can see this is a scroll wheel a touch scroll wheel not an actual moving wheel oh, but this is a touch this is a click wheel actually they call this the click wheel they call this the scroll wheel the moving wheel but apart from that everything else you can check by software and stuff but uh, by pictures that's how you tell so finally we've come to the end of this video and i hope you enjoyed it as usual please leave a big thumbs up on this video uh, if you like this video or a thumbs down it, i'm just looking for a honest opinion and uh, it's really nice to see the ipod has come all the way and we know the original uh, the term ipod kind of died off when they cancelled the ipod nano the ipod touch is still for sale but the ipod touch is technically an iphone that is kind of turned down but you can still call it an ipod and i don't know if apple will release a new ipod the preview the, the event a few days ago though there was ipod in the leaks in the in the, the leak notes but they never released a new ipod touch but i honestly hope they release a new ipod touch and maybe someday they'll go back to an identical old design uh i really wish the ipod comes back but there's no market for ipods anymore when you can play music on your phone especially with apple music and all the streaming services and not a lot not a lot of people buy music anymore but it's just nice to see where everything began with the ipod classic first generation it's been 20 years it's been a long time it's really uh breathtaking to see that uh this thing is now 20 years old Please leave a big thumbs up on this video. Hope you really liked it. Uh, check out my social media down in the description below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button as well. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.